Hey guys, welcome to JPT. I'm Carson G, and this is Just Plain Tech. Welcome to a beginner's guide video on Slackware. Now, somebody asked me if I could do this video in the live stream yesterday. Here it is. So, let's do it. Okay, now Slackware is a Linux distribution that, at least for me, was kind of hard to get used to at first. It was a little different from other Linux distributions, such as Ubuntu, Debian, or Linux Mint, that I was used to. Slackware is the oldest living Linux distribution, yes, the oldest Linux distribution still running, from 1993. Wow. And Slackware... Um, it's a little hard to get used to, like I said, so let's go over one thing. You may notice that when, when you first install Slackware, it will boot into the kernel, the Linux kernel, and it will just give you a login command line interface saying login, and you're like, what? Or maybe you don't even notice and you think it, and you think that because it's still in the kernel, you think it's still booting up. Because I'll tell you this: when I started using Slackware, I reinstalled it like five times because I never actually paid attention that it wanted me to log in through the kernel, and I just thought it was stuck on the command line booting, so I just kept reinstalling it. I'm like, what's the problem? How come it's not booting? But I know. Guys, it is booting. It will say Dark Star Login. And then you will um, log in. The first installation, you'll log in using your root password you created. Your root account. So you'll type in root. And then log in with your password. And then you will make your own account using the command add user and then fill everything out. And then you're good to go. And. Then you might notice that after you log in, it still doesn't boot up a graphical interface. It takes you to a command line interface, and you're like, oh, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, so I'm going to show you how you're supposed to boot into a graphical user interface. So one of the ways that you can do it is you can type in start X. Now... If you followed my Slackware installation guide, which I will kind of do a remaster of that video, you can check it out up here, but I'm going to remaster it in a later video. But if you check out that and you installed everything like I said, then um, then you should, this all applies to you after you did that. So to start the KDE desktop environment, for those of you who don't know what KDE is, it is a kind of high techy desktop environment. It's nice, it will run on pretty much any computer, but there are a little bit of bugs, but this is a really good version. There are very few bugs in it. So, um, all right, so we got KDE, and how you launch that is you'll type in start X if you did the installation correctly. If that doesn't work, type in start KDE. And then you can do start XFCE4 to start XFCE, which for those of you who don't know what XFCE is, XFCE is a stable, lightweight desktop environment that runs really quickly and just gets the job done every time. And um, I will do a beginner's guide video on what a desktop environment is. So, yeah. You can also type in the command XWM config. That's one word, XWM config, to look at the other desktop environments and or window managers that you can boot up. Alright, so just so you can have a little bit more of an idea of what I'm talking about here, check out this video up here, a guide to Linux as a whole, so that you kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about here. Anyway, some other things you might not be used to is that there's no software store, you have to use the old style compiling the packages and everything and you don't want to do that but you can install a software store and it's actually really easy just check out this up here 
to install a software store right after you've installed Slackware. Just install your Slackware store, check out that video, and bam. You, and now you can install stop software easily. Okay. Alright, so let's go over to reasons why you'd want to install Slackware. Um, number one is you get a choice of desktop environments between XFCE, KDE, and other window managers, which you can choose which one you want to run after you log in to the kernel. So that is really nice. No constant updates. For those of you who despise updates, and one of the reasons you are switching to Linux is because you are tired of Windows doing this. Updates. Postpone. What? I said postpone. What? <clears throat> I was doing something! Now I'm gonna be late for my assignment. Or also comes with many useful tools built into it. Like many graphics editing stuff like Inkscape, Color Paint, GIMP. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Inkscape and GIMP are kind of like the Linux version of Photoshop, but they're so much better. Um, also comes with many tools for development, which you don't have to use, but you could. For those of you who like developing stuff, it comes with many development languages that you can run. For like, for example, KDevelop is one of them, I think. Many tools for Office comes with many word processors, Excel alternatives, stuff like that. Just fun games and much more. So basically, my point is it will come with anything you need from many multimedia players to choose from to everything else to choose from all right um it also runs really nicely on on pretty much any computer on old computers for example i run it on my acer aspire 1 and it runs really nicely but um it does take up about 9 gigabytes of space instead of an average of six. It's a little heavier than most other Linux distributions, probably just because it has multiple desktop environments, but, um, I mean, hopefully that's not a problem for those of you who still have eight gigabytes on, as long as you have at least, like, 20 gigabytes on your hard drive, you should be good to go, although I'd recommend, like, 40 at least. Uh, anyway, so... Alright, like any normal Linux distribution, Slackware is open source. Why did I grab a flash drive? Slackware is open source and free, just like any other Linux distribution. Again, check out my video up there if you don't know what... Check out my Linux as a whole video, click these cards up here if you don't know what open source means. I will also do a video of what open source means in the future. And, bottom line, there's just no reason not to. There's, I can't think of a reason not to install Slackware. It's fast and free, comes with pretty much anything you can imagine. I mean, it might be a little hard to install software stores, and it might be a little hard to get used to, but it's definitely worth your time once you end up getting used to it. So, I will also do a future video on things to do after installing Slackware next week. So, subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time.